He runs the reading on the first lesson. Psalm this morning is Psalm 20. It's on page 224 of your reading hymnal. We'll, re we'll repeat the, by half verses. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. And send you out from his holy place. Remember all your offerings. And accept your own sacrifices. Grant you your heart's desire, and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at, our, at your victory and triumph in the name of the Lord. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy hand, when the victorious strength is right again. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down. But we will rise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King. And answer us when we call. The second lesson is from the book of Revelation. The seventh chapter, the ninth verse, the beginning of the ninth verse. And then the Apostle John writes the following by the Holy Spirit. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white, and white, white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed him, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne, will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them into springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here is the reading of the second lesson. And I'd like you to please rise from the reading of the gospel. The Gospels of the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning with the first verse, the Apostle John writes the following by the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus is speaking to his disciples then and now. He says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. The Gospel of all. You may be seen. All right, well, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us to be in the presence of your Son. 
For he has promised that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So we welcome the Lord Jesus with praise and honor and glorify you. And as we come before you as our shepherd, Lord, we know that we need to be led by you, fed by you, and healed by you in many ways. So open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts to what you have for us today. We pray, Lord, that whatever is of sin or temptation in the flesh or the devil would fall to the ground and die and be of no effect. So that we're completely available to all you have. Holy Spirit, be our teacher now. And let the word of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight. Our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we read the scripture, we find that Christian hope revolves around Jesus. And Jesus invites us into three areas of future that we need to see. He invites us into heaven. He invites us into the millennial reign. And he invites us into the new creation. Those are the three areas of future hope that we have as believers in Christ. So over the next few weeks, I want us to consider the hope that we have as Christians. I want us to consider that hope. And today, and on the next couple of Sundays, I want us to consider first the hope that we have of heaven. I want us to consider the hope of heaven. You see, when we look at John 14, we find that our Lord Jesus makes this great promise. He says that he goes to prepare a place for us. And if he goes to prepare a place for us in his Father's house, he will come again and take us to himself. So that where he is, there we may be also. In John 17, he prays that his disciples, both then and now, would be where he is to see his glory. So Jesus wants us to be with him in heaven. Heaven is where Christians are to go. That is what he wants us to see. But if heaven is where we are to go, if that's our future hope, well then, we need to ask four questions, or actually answer four questions, that often come to us when we think about him. There's actually more, but we'll just do it for First, what are we like when we go to heaven? Secondly, will we know each other in heaven? Third, what will we do in heaven? And fourth, and the most important question that needs to be answered is, how do we get there? All right, so those four. Today, we're just going to deal with that first question. What will we be like in heaven? What will we be like? See, the reason we need to ask that is because if you go into any bookstore, although there aren't too many of them around anymore, they want you to go online now. But I used to love to go to bookstores. And one time I went to Boulder, Colorado. And let me tell you what Boulder, Colorado has is very possible. They have some really great pizza in Boulder, Colorado. They really do. Uh, there wasn't much more that was really impressive to me, but the pizza was awesome. But there was a bookstore I went into. <laughs> I, was like, I walked in there, right? And, and I was not prepared for what I saw. Because I was, I was just browsing in this used bookstore. And on this shelf, and it went like, it seemed like a little mile long, all right? There are all kinds of books from the New Age, uh, the occult, and other things telling you what it's going to be like when you die. And then wedged right in between there was a book from C.S. Lewis. So I bought the C.S. Lewis book because I felt like I had to rescue it from all that. Right? But anyway, the, the thing was that they, they all had their idea of what happens. And one of, the, one of the things that you'll find that a lot of people have in their mind when they're thinking about heaven is that, is that when we get to heaven, there are these disembodied blobs of energy that just kind of go around and, and float around in heaven. 
Okay, that's one idea. It's not very popular, but it's one idea. A second more popular idea that you find in a lot of books, again, coming out of the New Age, but also coming out of other, other groups, is this idea that when you die, you'll go to heaven and you'll become something other than a human being. You'll become an angel. Okay? So that, so that you'll come back to heaven and you'll, you'll minister to God's people as an angel as you're, as you're uh, going back and forth. And you know, it, it's reminding me of when I was a young man. Well, okay, I wasn't really young. I was actually a boy, not you know, a teenager yet. Well, I was a teenager when it came out. Hard to remember now. You know, you get to an age where you can't remember quite what you were. But anyway, uh, they had this popular TV show called Highway to Heaven. You know, I had Michael Landon in it. Yeah. And, um, and he was a guy that died. His character died, became an angel, comes back, and he's an angel in training. And by the way, if you watch that series, you find out that this guy never makes it. He's always blown back. He, 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 never, he never actually earns his place. It's amazing. But anyway, um, the, the, the point is that that's a very popular idea that someone dies, they go to heaven, they become an angel, and they come back. But the question we have to ask is this What does God's Word tell us? What does the Bible tell us? Because there's only one authorized book that tells us the truth about. What's going on? And that book is the Bible. It's the inspired and error of the Word of God. So if we want to know, we need to consult God's Word because He's the one that knows. So, what are we like when we're in heaven? Well, first of all, what we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, which is very important for us to see, is that Paul likens our earthly body to a tent. Okay? But he says that in heaven, we have a building made by God. So you have a tent, and then you have a building. Now this became very alive to me when I was reading this, because I like to camp. My family likes to camp. We go out camping well, whenever we can for vacation. And we camped in tents, and we camped in campers, and we camped in a cabin. And let me tell you right now, I was mindful of how glad I was to be in a cabin when I went to Glacier. I went to Glacier, and we had a windstorm that went right to that camp. It would rain, and it was just yucky. And we got up the next morning, and then we were dry, and we were warm, and all the tents that people brought were just flat on the ground. And they're all sleeping in their pickups. Okay? Just picked up better than a tent. But the point here is that is that tents are, 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 are nice but they're flimsy. Okay, they, they won't do the job ultimately. You want something better. You want something stronger. You want something that'll last. You want something that will overcome. And that's what's offered to us in heaven. You see, we're not going to be these disembodied blobs of energy. But we're actually going to have a body in heaven, a form. And so we're actually moving, when we get to heaven, from a flimsy body to a stronger body. To one that will decay and die and get sick and have all kinds of evil happen to it, to a body that will not be susceptible to sickness death, or loss of vitality. We are going to have a much better body than what we have now. So that's the first thing that we see, is that we look forward to a better body. Not no body, a better body than what we have here. God has a heavenly hope for us. It's a body that's waiting for us, and it's a body that will never wear out, will never have pain, will never have sickness, and it will always be open to God and no longer have anything evil shut off what God has in store. So that's the first thing that we see. And that means that we're not these disembodied blobs. We have an actual body to look forward to. 
that is strong and perfect and eternal waiting for us in the heavens. But now here comes the million dollar question. If we're not disembodied blobs of energy, do we change? <coughs> do we become something other than human beings? And the answer is no. We remain human beings. We, re re we retain our bodies, but what's more, we even retain our genders. So if you're a male on earth, you're a male in heaven. If you're a female on earth, you're a female in heaven. God does not change your gender. You are what you are on earth. You're just perfectly perfect in heaven. But you are what you are on earth. By the way, you know what that means? It means you don't lose your personality. Okay? There are a lot of things you get to lose. Praise the Lord. There's a lot I need to lose. But you don't lose who God intended you or called you to be. You are still your personality. I'm still Rob. He's still Tom. She's still Sharon. We're still ourselves. We don't lose that. Okay? And how do I know that? Well, let's look. We didn't have this reading, but you can look it up when you get home. But in Luke chapter 9, we have the account of the transfiguration. And in that transfiguration, we are told that after Peter, James, and John wake up, they see that Jesus is transfigured, and there are two men who are standing with him. We know them to be Elijah and Moses. All right? And what's interesting is that in the Greek, when it said, when one is translated into English, two men, it's actually more specific than that. Because sometimes when you look at the Bible and it says men, it actually means people. It could be any human being. All right? But in this particular case, it's specific. It's two males. Two males were standing there with Jesus. Which means they were specifically male human beings who were standing before Christ. So here's Moses who had died 1,400 years before. His body, earthly body, had been buried by God on Mount Nebo. And, but here he was with a heavenly body. But he was recognizable as Moses. He was the same gender. He was the same personality. He was the same person. Just in an awesomely better body. And completely without sin and without any temptation to sin. The point here then is that we don't stop being human beings when we go to heaven. We become better human beings. Stronger human beings. <clears throat> Finally walking with God perfectly the way we were intended to walk with God perfectly. And there's one other thing you need to say. In the promise of heaven, there's a quality of life that we have there that you will never have on earth. And you know what that is? In, in Revelation chapter 7, you find there's a whole host of people from every language and every nation praising and glorifying Jesus and praising and glorifying the Father. And the whole of heaven is out there praising and singing hymns and giving God the glory. Why? Because they're finally free. Free of death. Free of sin. Free of the torment of the devil. Free of every evil and wicked thought and thing on earth. There's nothing else, nothing there now that can separate them from God or separate them from the love that they should have for each other. They are in perfect life, in perfect joy, in perfect peace, in perfect love. They finally have a day when they're in perfect peace. They finally have the day when they're in perfect love. They finally have the day when they're in perfect obedience and holiness. They finally have the day when there is no sorrow and they're just crying out praise and thanksgiving and laughter and joy. Uninterrupted, uninterrupted communion with God. What day that would be when we are there in that throne. And that's the day that Jesus wants to bring each and every one of us to. So now, the next question that we're going to deal with next week is this. Will we know each other in heaven? And we'll deal with that next week. Let's pray. So Father, I thank you that you have given us in Jesus 
an open door to the kingdom of God in heaven. We ask that you would quicken us so that we are walking in faith, love, and obedience to you. And Lord, I pray to you that, that you would continue by your grace to guide us as we walk in your word into that hope of heaven. And as we're walking in this life, Lord, we know there are people around who need to be saved. They need to know you. And so we pray that you would grant us divine appointments to share the message of your salvation with others so that they too may enter into heaven and not into hell. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Father, who is your 
your will, Lord, people should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to the needs of the people around us. Show us, Lord, where your word needs to be proclaimed. Grant us divine appointments to share your word. Grant us your grace to testify of all that you've done for us, that many may see the Lord Jesus Christ turn to him and be saved. Lord, we pray especially for your church throughout the world. Lord, our persecuted brothers and sisters, we pray that you grant them the grace to stand firm in the midst of every affliction and persecution, and that they should receive the crown of glory, and that their persecutors would come to know that you are Lord, Lord Jesus, and turn to you and be saved. Lord, we pray especially for our brothers and sisters in China, uh, in Indonesia, North Korea, uh, Nicaragua, uh, the Middle East, Lord, uh, and, and, and in Africa, Nigeria especially, Lord, we pray, uh, Lord, grant to our brothers and sisters the strength to stand firm and receive the crown of life. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, you command us to pray for our nation. And so we pray, Lord, that you would show uh, your mercy and bring wisdom and understanding, counsel, and light knowledge and the fear of the Lord to our president, the vice president, the Senate, the House, the Supreme Court, our governor, state legislature, state, local, and federal officials and judges. Lord, where they're right, sustain them, but where they're wrong, grant them the spirit of grace and supplication to recognize the wrong, to mourn over their sins for an only son, to throw all their iniquitous decrees into the fire and burn them forever and to establish policies that are pleasing in your sight and for the furtherance of your kingdom. Raise up righteous men and women who would rule not according to the flesh, but according to your spirit and your word. And Lord, we pray for our nation that you would cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord, of our sin, Lord, and our, 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 our deep rebellion. Forgive us, Lord, and cleanse us from bitterness, rage, anger, hatred, jealousy, unforgiveness, and unbelief. Cleanse us, Lord, from idolatry, witchcraft, and the occult. Deliver us, Lord, from the, the, the guilt that we have in the shedding of innocent blood. Forgive us for rejecting the order of creation and marriage. Forgive us, Lord, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Father, to you belongs the glory, but to us belongs the shame. But we ask that you do not pay us according to our sin, but in your mercy we to bring awakening to our nation. Open eyes, ears, and hearts to your Son, Jesus, that there be a revival and awakening in your church and in the country that will cry out for Jesus and that we would be saved. Lord, in your mercy, there are, there are prayers. <coughs> Lord Jesus, you've commanded us to pray too for the righteousness and peace of Jerusalem and for the Jewish people we pray now, Lord, that you would bring that righteousness and peace uh, to the people of Israel, that now would be the time when they recognize you, the one who made pierce, mourn over you as for an only son, and are cleansed by your blood, filled with your spirit, joined in your church with the one new man, and be with the congregations of your church in Israel, that they would preach your word with power, while you lift up your hand and heal miracles, wonders, and signs of heaven. And that the people of Israel will cry out, Blessed is he, Jesus of Nazareth, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are the healer. We thank you for that. We thank you that by your stripes we are healed. And you have commanded us to pray for the people in faith that they should be made well. And so we thank you, Lord, for that cross and we receive it. And we pray that healing into the lives of Robert Henke, Garrett Fenner, Ines Klein, Odin Yoda, Roger Rollis, Ruth Cahara, Doug Sari, Darla Donna, Rose Winkler, Linda Winkler, Janelle Bobbitt, Tim Hennessy, Janine Westby, Barb Boyer, Luella Hansen, Keith Hansen, Gloria uh, Foss. We pray for our military personnel, Lord, for their safety and healing. Rosie Lees, David Berg, Sammy Lees, Riley Legacy, and Harvey Nagel. We pray for our partners, Lord, that they would be granted uh, the protection of the blood, surround them with your holy angels, and keep them safe. Lord, we pray that there be no accident or incident, that they would glorify the name of Jesus as they take in the harvest. 
And Lord, we also pray for all those we mentioned now, either out loud or in our hearts. Lord, I pray for, again for our brothers and sisters at Gilgit, for Andrea Stanstrin, and for uh, those uh, in the area that are are sick here, Lord. I pray for your healing on them. I pray also for Amy and Jason and Emily and Jonas for your healing there, and I thank you for that, Lord. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. And for Mary Odegaard. Kevin, praise God. Yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of them, we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, God Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Also and with also, you. You may be seated with God. We offer with joy and thanksgiving when we have first given us ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them from the sake of Him who offered Himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you, do this for the remembrance of it. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all drink, saying, This cup is the cup of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we are his disciples on earth, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be As a word of instruction, again, we're going to, because of that concern about the virus, we're going to be taking people one few at a time to start at this uh, side. And uh, you'll come and I'll, I'll say, Body of Christ, give it to you. You'll take up the bread. And then you'll take uh, a glass. I'll say, Blood of Christ, shed for you. And then you throw the glass in the basket and go back to your pew. Okay. All right. Body of Christ in for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ in for you. The blood of Christ shed for Christ. 
by Christ and for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. By Christ we pray. The blood of Christ shed. By Christ we pray. And the blood of Christ shed.